Yes, thank you, our Lord and our Father. We glorify you this day. We lift your name high above every name tonight. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We begin to cover the entire prayer line with the blood of Jesus. We hand over all the prayers of this night to the hands of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May his name be glorified. We cover the minister of this night with the blood of Jesus. We we'll cover everyone with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name we we'll pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. My brothers and sisters, this night I have the privilege to introduce to us the guest for the night, Reverend Father Mbono, who will be transmitting from Italy. Father, God bless you as you are ready to take over from me. Thank you, Jesus. We we'll cover him with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We cover him with the blood of Jesus. We pray that the Lord shall strengthen him and use him tonight. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Brothers and sisters, that I am back to this prayer line. Our God is everywhere. That's why we call him our important God. Omnipresent God and omniscient God. Tonight, my dear brothers and sisters, as I pray, the Lord ministered to me what we are going to share tonight and we we'll have to pray over it. He told me that we should share on what I have captured. Despise the God of gold. Despise the God of gold. I want you to open your Bibles and you read with me in Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 5 from verse 9 to 12. 9 to 12. And the word of the Lord says, if you are the poor, you see the poor oppressed in a district and justice and rights denied. Do not be surprised at such things, for one official is eyed by a higher one, and who and over them both are others higher still. The increase from the land is taken by all. The king himself profits from the fields. And in verse 10, the word of the Lord says, Whoever loves money never has enough money. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with his income. This too is meaningless. As goods increase, so do those who consume them. And what benefit are they to the owner except to feast his eyes on them? The sheep sleep, the sleep of a laborer is sweet whether he is little or much, but the abundance of a rich man permits him no sleep. My dear brothers and sisters, I want us to read also Daniel chapter 5 from verse 22 to 23. Daniel chapter 5 from verse 22 to 23. And the word of the Lord says, but you, his son, O Belshazzar, have not humbled yourself, though you knew all things, you knew all this. Instead, you have set yourself up against the Lord of heavens. You had the goblets from his temple. You brought to you and you and your nobles and your wives and your concubines drank wine from them. You praise the gods of silver, the gods of gold, of bronze, of iron, and wood and stone, which cannot see or hear or understand. But you did not honor the Lord, who holds in his hand your life and all your ways. My dear brothers and sisters, that's why I said, as the Lord has inspired me that we share, discuss on the topic, despise the God of God. There are six gods that people crave to worship. 
in our modern world now. The God of gold, the God of silver, the God of bronze, the God of iron, the God of wood, and the God of stone. The God of gold is money. The God of silver is possession. The God of bronze is position. The God of iron is egoism or selfishness or greediness. The God of wood and stone is of superstition and idolatry. But I want us to, to specialize a particularize ourselves this night on the God of gold. The God of gold is a killer God. The love of money increases by having. The love of having also increases by having. Money, M-O-N-E-Y. It means, M means, many have perished because of me. O means, only those who are wise take me with ease. And mean, noble men and women find me, search for me in a good way. It means, it means, everyone who is careful with me will live. Why means, yet many perish. And all those, they will still perish because of me. There are blessings of money in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 2. And 10. In Proverbs chapter 10, verse 15 to 22. In Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 19. In Luke chapter 16, verse 9. It is the Lord who gives these blessings. There are dangers of money. In 1 Kings chapter 9, from verse 4 to 5. Mark chapter 4, verse 8, 19. Mark chapter 10, verse 21. Luke chapter 12, verse 33. There is love of money in Proverbs chapter 23, verse 4. In Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 10. In the House of the Apostles chapter 5, verse 1. And in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. We have the true wealth in Luke chapter 16, verse 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 10. We have the using of religion for money in Second Kings chapter five verse twenty six, in Ezekiel chapter thirteen verse nineteen, in Second Corinthians chapter two verse seventeen, in Second Corinthians chapter eleven verse seven, and the wickedness of money in Psalm forty nine verse one to twenty, in Psalm seventy three verse eighteen to twenty. I in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 9. My dear brothers and sisters, Proverbs chapter 13 verse 11 says, Dishonest money dwindles away. Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 says, You cannot serve both God and money. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 10 says, The love of money is the root of all evils. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 2 says, In the last days, men and women will be lovers of money instead of lovers of God. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5, the word of the Lord said, Free yourselves from the love of money. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 2, the word of the Lord said, Do not be greedy for money. There are fires that we should know, my brothers and sisters, because we live in a world that is capitalist. We are capitalism is worship. We are consumerism is worship. We are possessions are worship. We live in a world of too much acquisition, too much attachment to the material thing, instead of attachment to God. But the word of the Lord said, you are in the world, you are not of the world. You are in the world, you are not of the world. You are not a citizen of the world. You are in a journey. You are a citizen of heaven. Citizen of heaven. There are two entities that crave for worship. God and also money. 
But you have to make a choice whom you are going to worship. Money is something, but money is not everything. But God is everything. Those who love money, they miss God. But those who love God, money follows them. That is why the word of the Lord said in Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every other thing will be added unto you. And in, in Psalm 23 it said, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. When I dwell in the house of the Lord looking for God, following God, then this goodness and mercy and well, they shall follow me. In Mark chapter 16, verse 17, say, These signs shall follow believers. But the problem we have in our age now is that we want, we follow these signs and wonders, and we follow all this goodness and mercy, instead of first of seeking the kingdom of God and His righteousness. There are facts that we cannot dispute. That money can buy you a house, but money cannot buy you a home. Money can buy you food, but money cannot buy you appetite. Money can buy you a shoe, but money cannot buy you legs or feet. Money can buy you a car, but cannot buy you self-driving. Money can buy you happiness, but cannot buy you joy. Money can buy you a drug, but cannot bring you healing. Money can buy you clothes, but cannot buy you body. The whitest man on earth, the spear, has a black shadow. No mechanic can repair breaking news. No matter how tall you are, you can never see tomorrow. Even if you have millions of cars, you still have to walk into your bedroom, into your bathroom, into your sitting room, and into your kitchen. Being the best swimmer on earth doesn't make you a fish. The strongest man on earth can never carry a mountain. The smartest assassin on earth can never kill water. No matter how smart the police are, they can never arrest the air, or arrest the wind, or arrest the sun, or arrest the winter season. No matter how powerful the scientists are, they can never change the weather. They can never change winter. They can never change snow. They can never change autumn or, or, or summer. A child of God is more powerful on earth because he is the only one who has the divine power to tell a demon, in Jesus' name I command you to leave. Then why do you worship God? Do you worship God because of who he is? Or do you follow him because of what he's going to give to you? Are you on the prayer line to listen to the word of my mouth? To listen for the oracle of God's will and because of one problem or the other? Or for you to worship God? It's a question that you're going to answer. Many are too busy in the world now to pray. But whenever you are too busy to pray, you know that you are too crazy and you are too lazy to live. If you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, you will have crisis. Now, my brothers and sisters, I want to explain in the Bible some of those who have dealt with money and money has dealt with them. When First Timothy chapter 10 Chapter 6, verse 10 says, The love of money is the root of all evil. I want you to understand it, my brothers and sisters. You cannot go for something that you don't love or something that you don't like. When we talk about the love of money, we don't talk about the love of money in the negative way. We talk about it in the negative way. We don't talk about it in the positive way. When I mean the love of money in the positive way, I mean when you pursue money in the right direction, in the right way. Well, the negative love of money, when you pursue money in the wrong direction, people lie, people can kill, people can falsify in order to get money. 
That is the love of money in the negative way that you should not go into. When you read the word of God in Second Kings chapter 5, we know about a man called Elisha, a prophet of God. This man called Elisha had a servant called Gehazi. But there was a time in Israel, people never knew the power of God. And there was a man called Naaman, a Syrian. He was an army general, a top official in the government. But he was sick of leprosy. He couldn't get any cure. Having gone to many hospitals, many specialist hospitals, there was no cure. Then he had to call the king of Israel and told him about his condition. The king told him, I can't heal you. But there is a man of God called Elisha who can intercede and God will bring you healing. And the king sent the man to Elisha. When the man came to Elisha, Elisha needed not to see him, but Elisha told his servant Gehazi to tell the man, go to the river Jordan and wash seven times. My dear brothers, I am Elisha ministering to you now. I don't know about that sickness, about that condition. But whenever you have a struggle in your life, God has the strategy. Your struggle confronts the strategy of God, and there is a solution. I call it SSS, struggle, strategy, solution. But the thing is that sometimes the, str- the strategy of God, it looks as if it doesn't work, but it works just today. But this man called Nehemiah ne- said, how can I go and wash in the river Jordan? In my country, there are beautiful streams. There are beautiful rivers there. I have swimming pool in my house. They hold me because he worshiped the God of money because it was the gossip of God of favor that is position. Then the man of God, he didn't tell him anything, but the, the, the servant of the man of God told him, whatever he tells you to do, do it. And when he went and dipped himself into the river Jordan, for seven times he came out and he was healed. When he was healed of his leprosy, he came to the man of God and presented him with money, with gold, with silver. But the man of God rejected all those things and told him, I received this power without payment. And I also am giving without payment. And he could not understand me. He told him, go with your silver. Go with your money. You have received the healing. As he turned and he was on his way going, then look at what his servant did. The word of God said in Second Kings chapter 5, verse 21, So Gehazi hurried after Naaman. When Naaman saw him running towards him, he got down from the chariot to meet him. If everything all right, he said, Everything is all right, the has the answer. My master sent me to say, two young men from the company of the prophets have just come to me from the hill country of Ephraim. Please give them a talent of silver and two sets of clothing. He lied in the name of the man of God. He lied in the name of God. He lied in the name of the God and the man of God. Shout. And when he lied in his name, he was given those things. So when he was given those things, then it ministered to the man of God. And the one of God asked him, Where did you, where did you go? He said, I did not go anywhere. But Elijah said to him, Was not my spirit with you when the man got down from his chariot to meet you? Is this the time to take money? Or to accept clothes, holy groves, vineyard, flock, hairs, or main servant and maid servant. 
Neman's leprosy will cling to you and to your descendants forever. Then Gehazi went from Elisha's presence, and he was leprous, as white as snow. So look at the stage of money. He lied in God's name in order to get money, and he got leprosy. Have you lied in God's name? Have you betrayed your faith? Have you showed your faith out because of money, because of food, because of job, because of car, because of material thing? That is the faith of Gehazi, because of money. We also go in the scripture in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5. We know about a couple. We know their names as Ananias and Sapphira. They sold the land and conspire together to keep some of the part of the money. And they brought the rest of the apostles. When they did that, the Spirit of the Lord ministered to the apostles that they were lying. And when they brought it, Peter asked them a question. Is this the whole money that you have? They said, yes, this is the price. Lying in God's name, lying before the man of God. And look at what happened. Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received from the land? Didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of being such a thing? You have not lied to men, but to God. Oh my God. You have not lied to men, but to God. And when Ananias had this, he fell down and died. He died because of money. The God of money is a killer God. And when the wife came in, Peter also answered. Asked her, Peter asked her, Tell me, is this the price you and Anani have got for the land? She said, yes. That is the price. And Peter said to her, how could you agree to test the spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of the men who buried their husband are at, are at the door. And they will carry you out also. She also fell down and died. And she was carried out and was buried. Because of money. Because of the excessive love of money, they lied and they made their waterloo. We also know in the Bible about a man called Judas. Judas Iscariot. He was an apostle. He was a cardinal. He was an archbishop. He was a bishop. He was a man of God. He was ordained by Christ. But because of the love of money, because of the love of money, he sold his master 30 pieces of silver because of money. And he died and committed suicide. He was not even alive to use the money. We men of God, we children of God, we should be careful because of money. When Jesus was tempted in the garden, in the, in the desert, on a mountain by the devil, in the first temptation was food. Appetite, food, because we are in a world of consumerism. It's hardly for people to fast or to go into abstinence. But Jesus told the devil, man does not live on food alone, but lives on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. And it is also tempted in. The second one is now worship. Father, from this mountain, you worship me. And Jesus said, no. Okay, the second one. Or worship. Then the third one, he told him about giving him possessions, material things. I will give you all these things. Jesus said, no. You are a liar. I cannot worship you. You can only worship the living God. Him you shall worship. We can defeat this God of money by the word of God, by steadfastness in our life. 
Avoid egoism. Avoid consumerism. Avoid capitalism. Because we are not of the world. Though we are in the world, we are not of the world. When evil things and bad things happen in the world, it is a sign that this world is not our home. There is a place we are going. One day we must leave this world, whether we like it or not, to go and meet our Father in heaven. The God of money is a killer God. He has put a ring in the nostrils of many and dragging them to hellfire. Look at our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He had everything, but he left everything to die on the cross of Calvary for us. He was born by a poor woman called the Blessed Mother Mary, and a poor father, a carpenter. He was not even born in a hospital. He was born in a manger. A manger that we are the king of kings and the Lord of God was born. Look at Jesus Christ. He had no place to lay his head. Look at Jesus Christ. He has to borrow a donkey, a king, to ride him into Jerusalem. Even where he was buried, it was a borrowed tomb. What do all these things signify? That we are serving a master who has no love for money, no possessions. But we are serving a God who has love for his own people, who has love for his Father in heaven. My dear brothers and sisters, as you hear the sound of my voice tonight, with this message, despise the God of gold. Despise the God of mammon. Despise this God that is a killer God. As you hear the sound of my voice, I have to take the decision tonight. Maybe give more time in search of money and less time in search of God. Whenever you get the giver, you will continue to get his gifts. But if you only get the gift and you don't have the giver, the gift may be lacking and there will be no refilling except there is the giver and you can receive the gift. When you get the king, you get the kingdom because there will be no king without a kingdom. There will be no strong man without a stronghold. As children of God, we should look unto God in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 that says, Keep on looking to Jesus Christ, who is the author and finisher of your faith. Not keep on looking to money. I said money is good, but money is not the best. I said money is something, but money is not everything. That is why when you look at the paper money, you see the heads of people who are there. They are all dead men and women. If you take the dollar, you see the head of Franklin Roosevelt. He's a dead man. You see the head of Washington. He's a dead man. You are Nigeria. You take the Nigerian Naira. You see the heads of people who are dead. The head of Zeke. A dead man. The head of Awolo. A dead man. The head of Abu Bakr Tafwa Belewa, a dead man. Why do you put the heads of dead people in money, in paper money? If there is any monument, is a dead monument there? That's a question I ask. Why not put the head of living people there? If the living has anything in connection with the dead? So you see the head of dead men there. Because that God of money is a killer God. It's a killer God. So we have to be careful with it. You come to the sanctuary, you don't go to the mortuary. Money can bring mortuary, but God brings you to the sanctuary. And it doesn't declare you as an obituary. So we have to be careful with the love of money, which is the root of all evils. 
I don't mean, I don't say that you cannot work. You work for a decent living in the right way, but not in the wrong way in pursuit of all this money, the content to call money. We have to beware. We have to beware. We have to beware so that our spiritual life will be growing. As I have declared this year, the year of seriousness with God. We have to be serious with God in spirit and in truth. My dear brothers and sisters, as you have heard and listened to the sound of my voice tonight, let us go into prayers to ask God to help us to run away from this love of money and turn into the love of Him. Wherever you are, meditate on this world. Think about this world. How many times have I lied? How many times that I have trespassed and gone to the wrong direction in search of money, instead of in search of God? Think about it. As you think about it, we consecrate our life to God to take over everything that we have by this song. My lifetime, I will give God my lifetime. My lifetime, I will give God my lifetime. If I give God my lifetime, He will take care of me. He will never, never let me down. I will give God my lifetime. He will never, never let me down. I will give God my lifetime. My lifetime. We shall give God our lifetime. Our lifetime. We shall give God our lifetime. If we give God our lifetime, He will take care of us. He will never, never let us die. We shall give God our lifetime. My dear brothers and sisters, I want you to ask God for forgiveness. In the Ten Commandments of God, the first God says, I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not worship any strange God before me. The worship of money is idolatry. Ask God to forgive you. Ask God to cleanse you of this sin. Ask God to cleanse you, to detach you from this wicked attachment. Ask God to turn the love of money into the love of Him. Ask God to come to help you to fight this God of gold, God money. This God of favor, God of possession, opposition. This God of bronze, God of acquisition. This God of iron, God of egoism or selfishness or greediness. This God of wood and stones, fetishes and superstition. Ask God to cleanse you of this sin. Ask God to do it for you. As we are asking God to do it for you, I minister as a priest of God who stands between God and man. As I raise my hand up, I'm calling upon the power of God. When I see that, Lord, I will pass over you. Because the word of the Lord said in Psalm 58, Let God arise, let his enemies be scattered. Let them be blown like chaff before the wind, and let them bear like was before the fire. Father, they are inspiring your word. You said in, in Isaiah 13, verse 17, By the anointing, every yoke must be broken. Father, I lift my hand up. I pray as all those that are ministering in this prayer life, who has problems with attachment with money, 
who has problem with attachment to possession, who has problem with attachment to possession, who has problem with attachment to the things of the world, all those who have problem with this attachment. For I pray through the ministration, let there be a liberation. Let there be a breakthrough. Let there be salvation in their life. Your word said in Luke chapter 4, verse 18 to 19, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bring deliverance, to liberate the captives, to send them free. For that's what your word said. And in the house of the apostles, chapter 10, verse 38, the word of the Lord said, how God mightily anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And he went about doing good. As he was doing good, he was healing the sick. He was casting a demon and setting the captive free. Let this Jesus of Nazareth come into your life. Come into your business, come into your family, come into your career, and bring liberation and set you free from this God of God, this killer God, God money. In Jesus' name I have prayed. Amen. Amen. My dear brothers, my dear sister, wherever you are, I want you to raise your right hand up. Just wave it unto the Lord. The word of the Lord says, in Psalm 121, I look up to the hills and to the mountains from where I will come my help. My help will come from the Lord God, the maker of heaven and earth. And Psalm 125, the word of the Lord says, Those who trust in the Lord, they are like Mount Zion that cannot be shaken. And as the mountains surround the earth, that so the Lord will surround them. And in Psalm 127, the word of the Lord said, If the Lord does not watch over the city, in vain does the watchman keep vision. If the Lord does not watch over and does not build, in vain does the labor and labor. That is why we are calling him. God has the favor. God has the gold. God created everything. He is the only one who will give you the true riches that you need. He is the only one who will bless you. Because Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22 says, The blessings of God make it rich and added no sorrow to them. I pray for true riches in your life. I pray for true wealth in your life. I pray in Proverbs chapter, chapter 2, chapter 3, verse 2, that long life and prosperity will follow him. I pray in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 15 to 22, let these blessings make you rich. I pray in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 19, let these blessings make you rich. I pray in Luke chapter 16, verse 9, let these blessings make you rich. And also I pray, as the word of God said in Third John chapter 1, verse 2, he said, I pray that God will bless that your spiritual life will prosper even as your bodily and earthly life prospers. I pray that God will do it in your life. I pray that God will come into your life. But first, seek you first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will come into you. As we worship God and glorify Him, as your hand is connecting with the heavenly head, as we worship Him and glorify Him with this song saying, You are the Lord on Monday. You are the Lord on Tuesday. Day. You are the Lord on Wednesday. You are the Lord on Thursday. You are the Lord on Friday. You are the Lord on Saturday. You are the Lord on Sunday. You are the Lord. You are the Lord. You are the Lord on Monday. You are the Lord on Tuesday. You are the Lord on Wednesday. You are the Lord on Thursday. You are the Lord on Friday. You are the Lord on Saturday. You are the Lord on Sunday. You are the Lord. Unchangeable is your name. Unchangeable is your name. Unchangeable is your name. Oh Lord, already 
I minister to you wherever you are. All those have been disappointed with money. I minister to you wherever you are. All those who are in bondage with money. I minister to you wherever you are. All those who have been in excess pursuit of money. Wherever you are, let there be peace in your life. Let there be joy in your life. Let there be serenity. Let there be open doors. Let there be hell. Let there be the touch of divine in your life. So that that condition will never remain again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And I prophesy in Ezekiel chapter 37, dry bones shall rise again. Dry finance shall rise again. Dry business shall rise again. Dry family shall rise again. And also I prophesy, standing on the cross of Calvary, saying, it is finished. It is over and it is well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I cover all of you in the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. I cover your family, your business, your place of work, your health in the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. And surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for this ministration. Before I end this ministration, I want to give you an assignment that you will do just to confirm my message. Before you sleep this night, my dear brother, my dear sister, before you sleep, if you have money with you, hold it in your palm. Hold it in your hand. If you have anything most precious to you, is it your wife, is it your husband, is it your children, Hold it in your hand. You can hold your checkbook in your hand. You can hold any thousand of dollar in your hand. Just hold it in your hand. And you sleep off. When you sleep and you wake up in the morning, if that thing is still in your hand, don't accept my message. If that thing is still in your palm, don't accept my message. But after, I know what will be the result that you will not know where that thing is. You will slip off. But God will be watching you. He knows where everything is. That's why he is omnipotent God, omnipresent God, and omniscient God. Thank you for this night. And I promise you, before the end of the month, you are going to hear the sound of my voice. We have to preach on altars, building altars for the Lord. And also before Lent, you also hear my voice that I will be constant in this prayer line to minister to you. And God will continue to bless you. Never you leave the prayer line. The prayer line is a lifeline. It's a daily dose prescription for your healing. A daily dose prescription for your anointing. A daily dose prescription for your protection. It's a daily dose prescription for your spiritual enrichment. Never your message. As you cannot live without oxygen. So spiritually, you cannot stand without this prayer life. I bless God upon his servant that is using Brother Walkway, wherever you may be. I continue to remember your dream masses. Whenever I lift up the chalice to God, I call God's blessings upon you for protection, for anointing, for you to grow from strength to strength, from anointing to anointing, from power to power, from authority to authority, for us, for God to grow through you, through your instrumentality, this prayer line. And before you know it, thousands will join the prayer line. And also all the service team, all the service ministers, the singing ministers, the prayer ministers, the stewards ministers, and those who evangelize and call people in this prayer line, you will continue to reap the blessings God will bestow as you walk in his vineyard. So the Lord will continue to walk in your vineyard. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Father. God bless you. Um, calling on the intercessors to represent us in 
making a prayer over you on behalf of the prayer line. I'm inviting the intercessors, please quickly take over. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the Lord has been good to us once more. He, for us, He has brought the own workers, those that He wants to walk on His field, the field that we are, that He will continue to enrich us, that the Lord uses them to come to us and to give us increase. Tonight, I want to invite all the intercessors that are on the line. If you have muted your line, please, at this moment, unmute yourself that we may pray and thank God for the gift of this vessel and ask God to bless him the more, ask God to empower him. What we are hey, on this line, we are hey, the support hey, of hey, ministry. Hey, Jesus, 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 Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Father, Lord, in 
help us to let establish you and guide you from the evil one. Lord God Almighty, may you establish him, Lord. May you establish him in the office that you have to care for him. Lord, may you establish him in the motion that you have to care for him. Lord God Almighty, we pray in the mighty word of Jesus Christ. Let him call the light of his life, my Lord, in the name of Jesus. That is destiny, O Lord God Almighty. We are poor, Lord, in the light, O Lord, of the divine purpose of his life. Lord God Almighty, we are praying to have you and have the wish that you will guide us from every problem of the evil one. That you will guide us from every argument, O Lord, from the feet of the earth. Lord, just as you have God and Joshua, you have just this God and Joshua, and Joshua is against a certain finger of the enemy. Lord, tonight we are praying that always you will be close with the guy who has God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that He will always be justified and glorified before you, Lord God Almighty, that is sprinkling of your blood, that is power 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 against every evil, against every Egypt of God, in the name of Jesus. Always thank you. Let them be your holy name. Receive our glory and adoration in Jesus' the holy name. I pray. Amen. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Oh. Father, we thank you for all you have all you have done tonight using your praise. Father, we are appreciating you for this wonderful gift you have given to us. May the all the prayers of Father over him and upon him remain with him forever. Amen. On behalf of everyone in the prayer line, we pray a prayer of blessings over you in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, the message of this night has really touched everyone. God has spoken to us on the need to seek Him first, and then every other thing we follow. We have heard it tonight that if we follow God, we have everything. Other times we follow, including money. But when we follow money, then we lose God. I don't know the God you are following. Is that the God of gold? Or the God of silver? Or is that the God of bronze? Or the God of iron? Or the God of wood? Or the God of stone? But our brother Joshua says, for me and my family, we shall serve the living God. The God of heaven and earth. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. When the priest was ending this message, the Lord now ministered to me that I should do an altar call this night. <clears throat> so, I, in obedience, I'm going to make an altar call. Yes, Lord. I don't know where this message has touched you tonight. Yes. I want to let you know that. The message of this night is all about having any other thing as our number one instead of God. When God called on Abraham, he asked him to give him that which is most treasured in his life. Thank you, Jesus. That would have been Isaac. And God gave him, I mean, Abraham gave God that Isaac. He wanted to sacrifice him. He made up his mind. And God said, I have seen your mind. I have seen your heart, Abraham. And God bless him. And God gave him mighty blessings. You know what? Abraham could not allow anything. He couldn't allow anything, even his son, his only child. He could not allow that to be between him and God. As far as Abraham was concerned, God was his number one. What is your number one? 
If Abraham had told God, I would not sacrifice my son, this is my only son. Ask for another thing. I will give that to you. Then that would have meant that that thing he treasures, which could have been in this case, his son, Isaac, that would have been his own God. But he said no. He refused to make Isaac his God. Many of us have been praying and praying, give me child, give me children. We have been praying for years, 15 years. And then God now give you those children. And then you now start avoiding worshipping God the way you used to worship God. I think to say that the coming of the children have displaced God. And of a woman who was asking God for children for years, eventually God gave her twins, twin girls. Because of somebody I know. Now she wasn't coming to church again. Okay. She wasn't even serving God again. I remember when God was not annoyed with her. That means those twins had become her own God. It could be money. It could be beauty. Many people become so beautiful that they now, the only thing that enters into their heart is beauty. Then they displease God out of beauty. It could be intellect. Some of us get so educated that we forget God. Anything that will take away the giver <laughs> from our life or displace the giver with a gift, that thing should be despised. So the point I'm making tonight is that God is not only talking about money alone. He's talking about whatever thing that has taken his position in your life. That thing should be despised this night. And the, at this altar call, God is inviting us. God is calling us to come back to him. To streamline our ways to him. Remember Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. Come, let us reason it together. An invitation. As many as I involved in this are those who feel that this message is for them. This message is for all of us. This message is for me. This message is for you. This can be an opportunity for you to renew your relationship with God. If this message is really for you, if you really want to submit yourself to the Lord in a greater way, in a deeper way, all you need is to raise your hand wherever place you are. The Holy Spirit sees you. Jesus. This is not an open prayer session. This is not a prayer in a stadium that you can tell me that because your neighbor is there, you don't want to see you don't want your neighbor to see you. Jesus. You're not coming to the altar for everyone to see you. Right there in your room, nobody's seeing you, but Jesus is seeing you. Right what is that that is taking over the position of God in your life? Jesus. God has to be our number one. Lift up your hand whatever place you are. And it say after me in this other call. Heavenly Father. I come to you in prayer. Come to you in prayer. Asking for the forgiveness of my sins. Asking for the forgiveness of my sins. Including the sins by which I have displaced my relationship with you, with gift. In which I have displaced my relationship with you, with the gift you are given to me. I confess with my mouth and believe with my heart that Jesus Christ is your son. That he died on the cross of Calvary. That he died on the cross of Calvary. That I might be forgiven. And have eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. Father, I believe that Jesus rose from the dead. And I ask you now, O oh God, to be in my life as my Lord and my personal Savior. Mm -hmm. 
I repent of my sins. I repent of my sins. And I declare from today. And I declare from today. That you will be my number one in my life. Number one in my life. No other God will take your position. No other God will take your position. Nothing shall take your position again. Not even the gods of gold. Not even the gods of silver. Not even the gods of silver. Not even the gods of bronze and iron. Nor shall the gods of stone and the wood. Nor shall the gods of stone and the wood. But I shall serve you who is the eternal God. But I shall serve you who is the eternal God. And Father, I'm making this commitment today. And Father, I'm making this commitment today. And I'm pleading with you to give me the grace to abide by it all the days of my life. And I'm pleading with you to Lord, to give me the grace to abide by it all the days of my life. Because your word is life and truth. Because your word is life and truth. I therefore thank you, Lord Jesus. I therefore thank you, Lord Jesus, for cleansing me with your precious blood. For cleansing me with your precious blood. In the name of Jesus. 